Okay, good morning students. Today we are going to talk about two concepts in eighth grade history. We are going to learn about the concept of federalism and political parties. We're going to do a quick write, a pair share, a mini lecture, followed with a conclusion. Okay, let's get started. All right, your quick write today is going to be who should decide how a classroom is run. Do you think your teacher, like think of all your teachers, should they decide how the class should be run? Or do you think your principal and the assistant principals, do you think they should run and make rules for, the, for all teachers and students to follow in all the classrooms? What do you think? Take a two minute write. Okay, now I think you're done writing, so we're next going to do a pair share. So find your elbow partner and work on that pair share. Okay, so how many of you think that teachers should decide and why? Okay. And how many of you think that the principal and the, the admin team should decide? Okay. All right. So in reality, it's kind of a combination, right? It's kind of the teachers decide some things for the class and the admin team decides some of the things, right? Okay, so this is what we call the concept of federalism. In federalism, our federal government has the right to make some of the rules and laws for our country, and they can be found in Washington, D.C., right? However, we have, we live in the state of California and in California, we make, they make laws for our state, right? So in a law, for example, that we have in the state of California is you can't text and drive, right? We all know that that's very dangerous. Well, in my home state where I'm from, that is not a law. You can text and drive. So different states have different rules about different things, okay? So in our country, we have what's called federalism. The states can make their own laws regarding like education and gun, like owning a gun, like gun control laws and policing is all like, those powers are left up to the state. Whereas the federal government, they make laws for our whole entire country. So they would do something like uh, make a issue, like if we have an issue with a foreign country, uh, foreign relations, um, or they might, um, they're in charge of the post office because people mail things around the country, right? They're in charge of the federal things that are for the whole entire country. Just like our principal oversees the whole school and makes rules, our, each teacher is like the state, right? They make their own rules for their classroom. All right, so that's the idea of federalism. Federalism, the states and the federal government, they share power, right? And they share the power, and they also have their right to do their own thing. Okay. So why do we have this system? Well, there was this guy named Alexander Hamilton. You've probably heard of Alexander Hamilton because they actually made that famous play about him. Remember, he's the guy that got shot in a duel? 
Okay, well, before he got shot, Alexander Hamilton wanted a national bank. When our Constitution was being written, he wanted a national bank to control the supply of money in the United States. That makes sense, right? But there was this guy named Thomas Jefferson. You may have heard of him. He's the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so Alexander Hamilton Wadden wanted he a national bank. He was what we call a federalist. He believed in a strong federal government. Whereas Thomas Jefferson is what we call an anti-federalist. An anti-federalist is somebody who doesn't believe in a strong federal government. They believe in the rights, the state's right to rule themselves. Okay, so some examples today. President, former President Trump would be considered an anti-federalist. Because remember, and Biden is a federalist. And the reason we know this, for example, is Biden wants a mask for everyone in the country, right? When Tr President Trump was the president, he didn't have a federal or national policy on masks. He said, well, every state can decide for themselves. Okay, so Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson, they did not get along. They clashed because one was a federalist and one was an anti-federalist. Going back to like the principle is the federalist. The principal wants to make the rules for the whole entire school. An anti-federalist is a person who believes that the teachers should make the rules for their classroom. Okay, so the reason Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson are very important is they started what we call political parties. The federalist and anti-federalist were the first political parties in the United States. These political parties are the first political parties, but political parties have changed. What do we call the political parties we have today? Does anybody know? Good. Very good. Okay. So we have Democrats and we have Republicans, right? Democrats typically want a stronger federal government. When I talk to my Democratic friends, they want the federal government to make laws for our whole entire country, right? When I talk to my Republican friends, my Republican friends are like, oh, we don't want the federal government to have any power. We want the states to be able to decide for themselves. Okay, so today we have learned two concepts. I have given you federalism and political parties. Does anybody have any questions about these two topics? Okay, so what is federalism? What do you think of federalism? Do you think that this is a good way to run our country? Okay, and political parties. I don't know if I mentioned, but political parties are, these are the people we, that, dis, these are, they're not like parties, like we go to, you know, a party, our family party, a birthday party or something. These are, in each state, we have political parties, and they select who we're going to vote for, for our president and our governor and different lawmakers, like the Congress, the state legislator, etc. Okay, so these are the two concepts. What I'm going to ask you to do right now, in conclusion, is I want you to write three things, three takeaways from this lesson. If you were to leave this class, what would you say is most important that you learned today?
This is your exit path. 